What's going on, everybody? Let's say that you're rich. Not even rich. Let's say that you're wealthy. Bills are no longer a problem. They're a nuisance for an accountant. You got the Lambo, the Rolls, and the big house, and the yacht, and all that. And just money is just pouring out of your ears. Now what? Let's say that you worked hard, real hard, and you started from nothing, and now you're here. And you're not just rich, but you're wealthy. You've done it. You've made it to that upper 1%, and you now have wealth. How do you turn that into generational wealth? How do you keep some dumb descendant of yours from blowing an entire lifetime of work on a coke habit in cars? <laughs> How does one make that transition? I figured it out. After asking countless rich and wealthy people who have way more money than me, how do they do it? How do they ensure that their family has this money into perpetuity? I've cracked the code. Well, that's not fair. I don't say I cracked the code. I figured out how they do it. Today, I'm going to share that with you. Now, they've told me a lot of different things. I've asked literally hundreds of people with way more money than me how they do it. And there's a lot of variations and a lot of different things. But the long and short of it, there's three things that were like overarching things across the board. Just three things that they all were doing to ensure that their riches, which were now wealth, turned into generational wealth, that their entire lifetime of work was transformative for everyone in their family forever. So let's cut straight to it. Number one, you need to live forever. <laughs> well, you don't actually have to live forever. No one lives forever, but you need to ensure that your will, your words, and what you want lives forever. Like, so you can't physically live forever, but you can live forever on paper. So what does that mean? That means you got to put all that money. You have to start establishing trusts. He, the fact of the matter is you need to make sure that what you want to happen is what happens forever. Because you don't want, you know, your grandson who spoiled rich kid, you know, number 42 on the Forbes 100 list to go blown through all your money and everybody's right back where they started. You can Google it and find hundreds of stories of people who had ungodly amounts of money and just blew through it because they weren't prepared for it. I've watched lottery winners do it, you know, when I was working in banks. It, it happens all the time. So you need to put all of your assets, that's money, stocks, bonds, land, put all that stuff in trust. The reason you want to do this is because once you establish the trust, you get to dictate how that money is used, how it's dispensed, who it goes to, what percentages, all that stuff. So now what you want to happen is what happens going forward. And to be honest with you, more importantly, then you deciding what happens with it. You get to decide what doesn't happen with it, what it isn't used for. By you placing that money in trust, you get to dictate where it goes and more importantly, where it doesn't go. And you get to protect what you worked so hard to create. See, you don't want some gold digging hussy or you know some flim flam or you know some young guy to sweet talk your great granddaughter out of her entire inheritance. Nah, we don't want that. So you need to establish a trust. This way you, get to live forever. And once you establish that trust, you go on down there and hit the like button. Cause that way you get to live forever too, as someone who liked this video. <laughs> I, I, it helps me. It doesn't cost you anything, but hitting the like button will help you live forever and it helps me. So number two, second thing you gotta do, you gotta think about Uncle Sam. Let's be clear, Uncle Sam is going to get his cut. That's all there is to it. Tax evasion is how they brought down one of the most notorious gangsters of all time. Yeah, Al Capone, the dude who was walking around with a pistol in his pocket and the police wouldn't. They brought him down with tax evasion. Uncle Sam is going to get his cut. That's all it is to it. It's non-negotiable. So the best thing you can do is start thinking about, all right, I know Uncle Sam will come and knock him. He is. It's all it is to it. Like the death tax and the estate tax, he's going to come and knock him. You need to think about now, before he gets here, before that time arrives, how do you minimize his cut? There's a reason why so many wealthy people have businesses and LLCs and offshore accounts and trust accounts. It's all done to minimize their tax burden. See, Uncle Sam going to get a piece, but the best thing we could do is make his piece as small as legally possible. And you would be amazed at some of the hoops that some of these rich people and corporations jump through just to avoid paying taxes. But if you're wealthy and you want that wealth to last more than 10 minutes, 
you're going to need to start thinking about how to minimize your tax burdens because Uncle Sam's going to come and knocking. And if you're not ready, he taking everything, including the kitchen sink. All right. So number three, you will need to have some genius kids like Albert Einstein level, Stephen Hawking, some outright geniuses. Short of having geniuses, you need to educate your children. They need to understand the value of a dollar. I don't care if you're leaving them a hundred million, if it's a hundred thousand, or if it's a thousand dollars. Yes, you can start generational wealth with a thousand. It's a thing called compound interest. That money can go a long way. So never think that you can't get started. You need to educate them on what money is, how it works, what taxes are, what bank accounts are, what bankers are, what accountants are, what lawyers are. These are things that are not taught in school. Like I went to a really good school and they don't teach us about like balancing checkbooks or what, like how money works. You need to educate your children on specifically how money works and what goes into it. That hundred, whatever it is, thousand, hundred million, whether it's a thousand, I don't care what you leave them. They need to understand how hard you work to get that money, what the true value of it is and how important it is that they follow the teachings that you're going to give them so that they can preserve it and it can last going forward. Because if you don't teach them, that money is going to be gone. One generation of somebody with a drug habit or somebody with a dumb girlfriend, like it could be gone in no time. So you got to teach them how important money is. You know what else you got to teach them? To gently touch the like button. I'm just saying, like it, it won't hurt. Like if you if they touch the like button, that they're gonna understand the value of money because they see how hard I'm out here working for it. <laughs> but rule three, genius kids. Now those three things, live forever, prepare for Uncle Sam, and have some genius kids. That's not an all-encompassing guide. That doesn't it, it doesn't cover everything. It, it doesn't. But those are three things that at their core you have to do. And they all kind of feed into each other and you have to do all three of them. See, if you don't have trust accounts, but you educate your kids and you prepare for Uncle Sam, without a trust, some hussy could come in or some young guy can come sweep your granddaughter off feet and all the money you work for is gone. Or let's say you have the trust account and you educate them how poor money is, but nobody thinks about Uncle Sam and he takes it all. Or suppose you prepare for Uncle Sam, you give him a tiny little bit and then you have a trust fund. So you did everything you can, you don't teach your kids anything and they blow it on dumb stuff. Maybe your great grand, maybe your great grandson thinks that Rolls Royces are cool and go buys one for him and like a dozen of his friends. And they're all bums. You, you, don't, you don't want that to happen. So you need to do these three things. You need to do all three of them, regardless of how much you leave in your kids. Now, if you're saying, well, I don't have any kids, anybody you care about. <laughs> like if you, like my brother is not my brother by blood, but if I'm leaving him money, trust and believe all three of these steps will be taken. You gonna know about money. We gonna prepare for Uncle Sam. And there's gonna be a trust set up so that it's used appropriately. Like, I have two kids, so all three of these steps will be taken. My kids can tell you what a stock is. They can tell you what an option is. They can tell you what a bond is. They know, they know what money is. They know how important it is. But you have to take these three steps at minimum. There are more things you can do, and I strongly recommend you do them. But at minimum, you need these three steps to establish generational wealth. You need a seed. Now, that could be a $100 million seed. It could be a $1,000 seed. But you need a trust fund, you need to prepare for Uncle Sam, you need to have some genius kids. Now, if you've done all three of those things, outstanding. You're, you're well on your way to establish generational wealth. If you haven't, you got some work to do. And I'm willing to bet that y'all got some work to do. <laughs> so let's be clear. Like These are things that you need to do. I don't care if you only got $100 to put into a trust. Get it started. Start somewhere because the trust is going to grow over time. That $100 don't mean much to you or may. But in time, you know, your grandkids, it's going to be a whole lot more than $100 million. Like, I went over some ETFs that have an average in over 10% a year. Now, you may think, oh, 10% or $100 is nothing. You let it sit there for about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It's a whole lot of money. You can really change the trajectory of your entire bloodline, your entire family. Be that one person. Open up that trust account. And if everybody don't know about taxes, let them know. Hey, we got to do some things to minimize the tax bill. Yeah, that's all it is to it. And ha and if you can't have genius kids, educate everybody. So that's me. I'm Larry. I'm not just a veteran banker. I'm your veteran banker. You get the benefit from my years of experience dealing with people who got a whole lot of money. Rich people are generally pretty nice people. And I don't mean like stratospheric, super ultra net worth, like Forbes, billionaire rich people. I mean like just regular people that are worth eight, nine figures. They come into the bank like everybody else. They're regular people. 
They use it well within their means. And if you sit down and just have a nice civil conversation, you can learn a whole lot. So if you want to establish generational wealth, you need to take them three steps. I'm Larry. I'll see you guys later.